part of our ongoing uh, education series on the primary and secondary structured settlement market, I've got a special guest today. My guest is Trish Laborde, who is the Senior Vice President and Division Counsel of Stone Street Capital and the President-Elect of the National Association of Settlement Purchasers. Hello, Trish. How are you doing today? Great. Excellent. Well, I understand that you're doing a, a uh, interesting presentation at the upcoming annual meeting of the National Association of Settlement Purchasers on life contingent structured settlement payments and the difficulties and uh, problems with pricing out those types of cash flows when people are trying to sell them. Could you elaborate a little bit for our listeners? Sure. Uh, well, to understand our issues with life contingent transactions, you have to understand that every structured settlement purchasing company borrows money in order to fund our structured settlement transactions. We go to a, you know, a bank or some other institutional investor or some other source of financing to come up with, um, up with the funds. And generally, what happens, that, that floor, that cost of funds, is the floor for, how, for um, the rates at which we assess our transactions. For example, if we borrow money at 6%, we obviously can't purchase a structured settlement payments for lower than 6% because we would lose money on every transaction. Uh, in life contingent transactions, since we will not get the payments upon the death of the annuitant, uh, they are riskier for both us and our investor, and we have to do something to kind of hedge against that risk. Does that, does that, does that risk uh, mean that you go out and buy a life insurance policy? Well, there's two ways to do it. You either go out and you buy a life insurance policy, and you can, if you ever looked at a structured settlement transaction, those are pretty clear on the disclosure statement. There will actually be a deduction in the expense section for a life insurance policy. For reasons not related to our industry, it's getting tougher to find insurance companies willing to uh, sell life insurance in, under these circumstances. So the other option is to not hedge against the risk of death and to just, you know, um, ascribe some kind of value to the additional risk that you undertake by buying life contingent transactions. And the way you ascribe a risk is the, the rates go up. So what you'll see in those transactions is that the rate for a 20-year-old healthy individual selling structured settlement payments is going to be lower than the rate assessed to a 60-year-old smoker um, who's had a heart attack in the past because that rate that we are borrowing money, that we're trying to kind of capture that risk is, um, you know, is, is assessed in the rate, assessed to the uh, individual annuitant. How do, uh, how do, Trish, how do factoring companies assess the mortality risk? Do they go out and hire their own medical underwriters or hire actuaries? What, what type of process do they go through, just in general terms? Yeah, we hire, we, we actually work with, you know, uh, you know, actuaries who determine who is who look at the pool that we've uh, of of transactions that we've set, uh, that we've kind of pulled together. They look at an individual and they do underwrite them. They look at you know their medical history, their criminal history, which actually plays into your risk. Um, you know, they look at you know what kind of prescription drugs you're on, your age, various factors to come up with basically a life expectancy. But you know, even if what the life expectancy for the individual is, you know, 40 years, we always recognize that there is some level of additional risk that anyone could, you know, could uh, pass away before the end of the period. So even the healthy 20-year-old is going to get a higher rate than someone who's selling, you know, guaranteed payment, a guaranteed payment stream. Right. So the, prefer the preference uh, is for the guaranteed payments. Have, have uh, factoring companies uh, or co uh, settlement funding companies, have they always purchased life contingent payments, or is that some more of a recent phenomenon? We always have, but it's expanding quite a bit. And I think it's a, largely consumer demand. Um, it's really a good estate planning tool. If you are an individual, you know, we see this quite a bit, individuals who have uh, life contingent payments, and that's a potential for a payment stream. And they have a family to support and a mortgage to pay, and they're concerned about you know, estate planning. What happens to me if I die and my family does not have these payments to live on? So we do get some sellers who just come to us strictly to turn that potential cash into a guaranteed lump of cash that they can use to pay off their mortgage or, or something else. And we're seeing the, the consumer demand greater now that people understand our product a little bit more. Great, great. Well, that's, a, that's an excellent answer. 
Do you have any uh, further thoughts, just in terms of wrapping this up, any further thoughts that you think might be helpful for our uh, viewers and listeners regarding life contingent structured settlement payments? We don't want to give away your full speech for the, uh, for the NAS <laughs> meeting, but uh, you know, do you have any, any, any further thoughts that you think might be useful, at least to give people a taste of what's to come? Yeah, well, you know, what we're going to be talking about quite a bit in the uh, in our in our talk in in October is a lot of, you know, going into the details about the rate. You know, the rate that we do that is assess the annuitant presumes that the person lives the entire time period. If we have an unhedged transaction, if the seller dies before we receive a single payment, the company is out the entire lump. The entire amount of money paid to the annuitant. So there is a substantial risk. Uh, you know, there is a substantial risk that we do incur. And, uh, but we do disclose to everyone, you know, the the worst, you know, the well, the worst case scenario from our perspective. But the uh, seller certainly would rather pay the higher rate <laughs> live the <laughs> entire time period. <laughs> so, right. yeah, we'll we'll talk. We're going to talk quite a bit about you know explaining rates in court. One always one of the issues for us in our in our industry is making sure judges understand the unique characteristics of this product. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, uh, that's, it's been very informative and appreciate your taking some time to be with us, uh, us here on the show. And uh, for those who uh, have an interest in attending the uh, National Association of Settlement Purchasers meeting, I understand that this year it's, uh, it's open as long as you pay the fee? Yes, that's right. It's an open conference. Um, it's, we, it's, there's information about it on our website. That's on www.nasp-usa.com. Our agenda's on there. And uh, open to anyone who, uh, who has an interest in our industry. Great, great. Well, I very much appreciate your time, and as do our viewers and listeners. Thanks so much for being on the show, Trish.